How do we heal the wounds of the world if we cannot hear our own? What does it mean if it's not in the home? One more time, listen. I said, how do we heal the wounds of the world if we cannot heal our own? And where does it If it's not in the home. Ah, good morning. I ain't going to take y'all to church this morning, I promise. But thank you so much, Michelle Pharrell, for that beautiful, beautiful song. How do we heal the wounds of the world, y'all? And I guess it starts with healing our own, our own wounds. It's the only way it can work and Damn, we got a lot of wounds. Y'all already know it. You know you know it. And that's why you're probably sitting up in the mental house right now with me. Your host, Khadija. I want to thank everybody for being here under the sound of my voice. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. Thank you for being here. For those of you who have purchased t-shirts, um... I will definitely get them out this weekend. I want to thank you for supporting the channel by getting these t-shirts, 10 bucks, um, supporting and taking control of your mental capacity. You know, we're going to be doing this and we are going to make sure we keep people informed and, and, and conscious about what's going on in their personal life in order to heal the world because that's what we got to do. You know, we got to. We got to. We got to do this. But today, for today, 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 I want to um, read a few passages. And it's from a book uh, called The Human Magnet Syndrome. Why We Love People Who Hurt Us. And it's by um, Dr. Ross Rosenberg. And he's a, a clinical psychiatrist. And I think um, it's emotional manipulators, codependence, and dysfunctional relationships, okay? And even though I know this word is so overused when people say narcissist, the first thing I think about is really Donald Trump, honestly. Um, and that does not mean everybody that's a narcissist does not have a moment of clarity or any of these things. I'm just saying that from a person that's not a therapist, that's not a psychiatrist, that's not any of those things, from a lay person, just looking at how he goes about insulting people and throwing things out there and being very disrespectful and not even have a conscience to what somebody else um, may be going through or no kind lets me know that he's in a class all by himself. There is no comparison between, in my opinion, Minister Louis Farrakhan, I've had all kinds of mail, uh, and Donald Trump. Now, and, and if you don't know that, that's because you have not listened to Farrakhan. You've gone by propaganda. It's the only thing I can say. Because any sane, in my opinion, rational human being, and I want to make sure I say this, and I want to make sure I stand on it. Anybody who has ever heard a clear, precise lecture from the Honorable Lewis Farrakhan, cannot dispute the truth in what he says. You may not like it. It has nothing to do with if I'm a member of the Nation of Islam or if I'm, I know white people. And I'm going to name one, for instance, like a Bruce Willis or a few. I, I know a few white folks that understand the message of Louis Farrakhan. So I'm not here to try to discuss him with you or try to debate if He's a narcissist. I'm sure he has some narcissistic tendencies. He's a human being. Okay? 
But Donald Trump, and to compare the two, is, in my opinion, is blasphemous. Donald Trump is a madman. Okay? And, and, and evidence is saying that people who are not trust fund babies, people who are poor and don't have any means to support themselves, or very little, and they depend on the government, which is mostly his people, poor white folks, that he will shut the government down because he can't have his way, in my opinion, is a perfect narcissistic response. I mean, perfect. It's a perfect response to um, when you can't get your way, um, I'm going to make everybody suffer until you do what I say, <laughs> and I'm not surprised. Okay? Y'all got to wait for my I am not surprised at all. Okay, I'm back. Which is not to say that um, not everything Donald Trump says is crazy. Um, there are some things that I do agree with uh, Donald Trump on. But I'm just saying they're two different entities. And so for those of y'all who hit me with that, miss me with that, please, because don't come for me with that crazy. Really, it's just insane. Now, and the only reason I can say that is because Donald Trump's conversation is just insane. Anytime he, everything is always the best. Oh, yes, uh, we're going to have the greatest thing in the world. It's going to be the best. Oh, it's the best. It's the best. Everything is high flu. Everything is this, that, and the other. No, it's not just a confidence factor. It's a madness going on there. It's, it's different than Farrakhan saying, um, we have to humble ourselves. We have to stay worthy. We have to. That's what he's projecting out. Donald Trump is projecting what the hell he is crazy. It's just that simple. And I'm not here to make this about Donald Trump. Okay, really. Um, like I said, there are some things that he says I agree with. The majority of things he says I don't. Now, okay, so let's make it clear. And then with, when it comes to the minister, if you really listen to the minister, and what he talks about, um, well, no matter what your political affiliation, and if you can stand in the truth, um, which is really white fragility because they don't want to stand in the truth. And then they project all this stuff on Farrakhan as if he has no reason <laughs> to be angry, neither his people from all the terrorism that they've experienced. But that's another story. OK, so anyway, Dr. Ross Rosenberg, he had three categories for narcissism. Healthy narcissism, um, benign or, or, or mild narcissism, all the way up into narcissistic personality disorder. And these are his, um, his definition. Not mine. Not contagious, so don't get mad at me. I suggest that y'all go to Dr. Ross Rosenberg's page and give it to him. Serve it up, but don't come for me. All right, here we go. Healthy narcissism. Prior to discussing the narcissistic personality disorder and its subtypes, it is important to first mention that narcissistic traits exist on a continuum. On one end of the continuum would be would lie the mildest narcissist. On the other, the most severe. Okay? So on one end, we're going to have mild. And then on this end, we're going to have most severe. The psychologically healthy narcissist would value and seek recognition, praise, and affirm, affirmation, and affirmation while being confident, moderately boastful, and assertive in the pursuit of their goals. Healthy narcissists do not denigrate others to make them feel bad about not being as gifted, talented, or as motivated as them. They would be perceived as confident and boastful while also seeming humble, sensitive, and empathetic. They simply enjoy feeling important, valued, and recognized while not wanting or needing to hurt or harm anyone else in the process. Healthy narcissists are also aware of their robust confidence and self-promoting behavior, okay? And according to Simon Crompton, he's the author of All About Me, Loving a Narcissist, okay? 
So y'all get that one? That's the first one. We're going to call that some healthy narcissism. Let's keep it going. Some make a distinction between healthy narcissism and unhealthy narcissism. The healthy narcissist being someone who has real sense of self-esteem that can enable them to leave their imprint on the world, but who can also share it in the emotional life of others. It could be successfully argued that some level of narcissism is healthy. So we all know of someone, whether it be a friend, sibling, co-worker, friend, etc., who is consistently comfortable in the role of the life of the party, the know-it-all, or the talented and the comfortable performer. As much as these individuals are motivated to flaunt their talent and fulfill their own personal needs, they also desire to care, love, and respect others. As much as these individuals are motivated to fulfill their own personal needs, they also have a desire to care for, love, and respect others. The seeds SV for these individuals would be um, a plus one to a plus two, to be fair. Healthy narcissists shouldn't even be called narcissists since the term has definite negative connotation. Okay, so I contend that we all have a little narcissism in us and, you know, most you need a certain amount to be healthy, to, to, you know, to assert yourself, to bring the best out of you, okay? So now we're going to talk about benign or mild narcissists, because there's a lot of us, because at first I was struggling with, am I a narcissist? And I really was, because my experience in show business, how I, you know, would project myself to people and how people would perceive me sometimes, which was not very good. So I, you know, I, I had to struggle with that. Like, am I a fucking narcissist? Excuse my language. Am I a narcissist? Am I really? No. Benign or mild narcissism. I may have some traits. And sometimes when you have to command a nine-piece or a ten-piece band, you have some healthy narcissism going on. Because working with a bunch of guys can be very challenging at times. Anyway, I don't want to get into a gender war with that, but you get what I'm saying. Benign or mild narcissists are represented on a continuum as of self as a self-care value of a three. They are able to participate in and sustain healthy relationships, although they are tilted slightly towards the self-centered side. They are slightly self-obsessed and can be unintentionally mildly annoying to others. Traits of a benign or mild narcissist would exclude an active tendency to seek praise affirmation and recognition for unique personality, talents, or their set of skills and contributions. They may be periodic, periodically self-consumed, over-the-top confident, and mildly entitled. These individuals are aware of their self-indulgences but are able to moderate them, especially if they have upset or offended somebody. Okay? Remember this now. Especially if they know that they have upset or offended someone or if they are criticized for their narcissistic behavior. Seldom do the, their narcissistic tendencies result in harm, although benign narcissists are, are periodically carried away with themselves. They have the ability to be aware of these tendencies and, when necessary, are able to control themselves or uh, regulate these you know, behaviors. Additionally, they do not become angered or hostile when confronted about them. Benign or mild narcissism could be a product of immaturity as younger adults are more self-centered and obsessed than their older and wiser counterparts. Younger adults are still learning about social norms and age-appropriate behavior. They simply do not have the life experience and skills to understand the negative aspects or consequences of their narcissistic tendencies. Okay, like a two-year-old. A two-year-old is extremely narcissistic. And a three-year-old, I don't know if y'all know that, but I got a three-year-old grandchild and she's just as, I mean, really? She's Donald Trump reincarnated. Uh, anyway, benign narcissists may well liked and successful, um, may be well liked and successful in their careers as they work very hard to get noticed while going the extra mile to make sure people approach, appreciate and take note of their skill sets since they are capable to mild uh, since they are capable of mild to moderate levels of empathy and mutuality in their relationships they are not experienced as characteristically harmful or hurtful 
Their benign pursuit of attention and recognition combined with their tendency to seek the spotlight is likely to endear them to their friends. They are often appreciated and valued for their affable, charming, funny, and confident nature. Loving center stage and seeking recognition, these individuals are also valued for their entertainment value. After all, in our culture, being confident and self-assured and admired are very good personality traits. Okay? Now, that was benign and mild. Now, you got a, a moderate narcissist here. Now, although moderate narcissists may be exasperating and challenging, they do not qualify for a narcissistic personality disorder diagnosis. They exist in the darker area of the narcissistic continuum. Remember, we're going up the line. We're going up the continuum. We started way down here. Now we about her, okay? As my cousins in St. Louis would say, we about her right now because we're going up the continuum, okay? All right. So now they, um, they exist, again, in a darker area of the continuum between annoying and bothersome, the pathological. According to the continuum of the cell theory, the moderate narcissists of, um, have a... Um, a um, a CSB of four, okay, which means that they are able to participate in a relationship where that they are the only able to reciprocate with low levels of love, respect, and caring. This is not moderate now. A lot of us fall into this category. Um, in a relationship, moderate narcissists are exhausting as they require constant attention, affirmation, and validation. Unlike those with a diagnosable narcissistic personality disorder, they have some insight and control over their narcissistic traits. Many of us know and even love these narcissists. They are our friends, family members, or loved ones who constantly and consistently expend a great deal of energy making sure that we know of their value, importance, and uniqueness. They thrive on any positive attention and recognition. They excessively value and are consequently motivated and seek admiration, attention, status, understanding, and support. Moderate narcissists wear their self-value on their sleeves, and they are prone to bragging about their worth, talent, and success, sometimes to the annoyance of others. Like benign narcissists, they are often the life of the party, the resident expert know-it-all, comedian, or the entertainer. They like to announce their accomplishments and skills as well as their ability to make things happen for others. Unlike benign narcissists, they do not always know when to stop, though, their attention-seeking or bothersome narcissistic behavior. And that's why they can get on people's nerves. Unlike the individual who has been diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder, the moderately narcissist person is capable, albeit in a limited fashion, of being empathetic and unconditionally given in their relationship. They are also capable of participating in and sustaining lower-level reciprocal and mutual relationships. The value of sharing and their giving is not lost on them. Even though they struggle with regulating their narcissistic traits, they can be loyal friends, just ones who are much more entitled on the me side than you side. Moderate narcissists are able of meeting someone, but not most of their loved ones' emotional and personal needs. Okay? They are, they, they are capable of meeting some but of their emotional loved ones' needs, personal needs. When necessary or demanded, they are able to suspend their self-centered, self-obsessed, and selfish ways. Okay? They are capable of benefiting from therapy as they are able to take a limited responsibility for their behaviors and the treatment of their partner. Moderate narcissists thrive in careers in which they can be the center of attention, perform, and openly showcase their talents, abilities, and their successes. Their professional successes can, in fact, be enhanced by their, their tendency to seek success while making sure that everyone else is aware of it. Careers such as music, acting, academia, business management, and politics are not only appealing to them, but naturally fit their personality professions that require a public demonstration of one's skills, um, abilities, 
and will naturally um, in, be enticed into the moderate level narcissist. You know, and in my mind, I, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist. I haven't had a diagnosis or anything like that. But I think most people in show business, a lot. Now, you know, I ain't gonna say most because some of them are off the chain. Some of the people that I'm aware of and maybe have um, had friendships with over the years maybe fall into this category a little bit. Um, most performers, you know, they we, we're self-centered. It's just that simple. No sense of lying about it, you know, um, and no sense of being ashamed of it. It's, it's, it's who you are, you know, it's some of your personality traits. But no, nor do you set out to hurt people's feelings, and you can get called to order real quick, and you can be checked, okay? Because you want the love of your people and people that you love and care about. Okay, moderate narcissists, oh Lord, are typically neither malicious nor intentionally harmful in their pursuit of praise. Due to their capacity for personal insight, albeit limited, they are able to control or moderate certain elements of their narcissism. Unlike a person with true narcissistic personality disorder, they are able to respond to constructive criticism without reflectively striking back or hurting the person giving it to them. Moderate narcissists. Hi, baby. I'm trying to finish this. Can I finish this real quick? Okay. Moderate narcissists, um, let's see, they do not respond to constructive feedback or criticism with reflective anger, rage, or humiliation, narcissistic injury. And when their narcissism, when their narcissism injuries, and, and when their narcissism injures others, they are able to experience limited amounts of remorse and enmity for those that they unintentionally affected. Nonetheless, moderate narcissists walk a fine line between robust self-confidence, arrogance, entitlement, egotism, and a more pathological and harmful form of narcissist. Narcissistic personality disorder. And I, like I said before, I thought I came under the, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not saying that, like, again, that I'm sitting up here trying to diagnose myself from a book, but I would say moderate narcissism for most of the people that I know that are in show business, honestly, y'all. And some of y'all are full-blown manic like Robin Williams. I'll be back in one second. 